Limited. It's called hosted by DAM Capital Advisors Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Bhumika Nair from DM Capital Advisors Limited. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thanks, Zico. Uh, good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to the Q2 FI24 earnings call of Container Corporation of India. We have the management today being represented by Mr. Sanjay Swaroop, Chairman and Managing Director. At this point, I'll hand over the call to Mr. Swaroop for his opening remarks, post which we'll open up the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Bhumika. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, I am joined by my uh, directors, Director Finance, Mr. Manoj Dubey, Director Domestic, Mr. Azhar Shams, Director Projects and Services, Mr. Ajit Panda, and Director International Marketing and Operations, Mr. Priyaranjan Padi. Uh, all of us are present here. Just I will give a brief snapshot and then you can start the questions. Uh, company has uh, made total logistic solution to customers as one of its focus areas. That includes warehousing as well as first mile, last mile logistics. Keeping the stress on ESG norms, we have procured, uh, uh, we have given orders for 100 LNG trucks for first mile, last mile, and 50 trucks have already arrived. Out of that, uh, 40 are in uh, Baroda and 10 are in Nagpur. They are already serving the customers. And uh, we hope to garner good margins and good business by focusing on FMLM. And uh, this will be one of the focus area. It will remain a focus area for the company. Second point I want to mention is that uh, the FMCG cargo, which is a low weight cargo, has not been with us till now. So uh, taking a correction, corrective measure, company has ordered 12 feet containers. Uh, we have given orders of 1,000 such containers. Out of that, uh, 180 containers have already arrived, and trials uh, have been conducted. Now commercial uh, operations are going to start very soon for these containers, and uh, by deploying these containers, we are very confident that we will be able to uh, increase our domestic share in which uh, we can have uh, uh, FMCG cargo also with us. So these 12 feet containers will be a, a big, uh, you know, uh, focus area again for the company. We are focusing on technology-based logistic solutions to our customers, and for that, we already are uh, doing a project at uh, Sublakabad for providing artificial intelligence-based terminal management system. It is likely to be commissioned in another, I think, 15 days' time, advanced stages. And uh, we are also working on app-based FMLM to our customers, so which is uh, going to be uh, taking another one or two months to start working. Then uh, we are uh, very actively working on ICE battery project for uh, providing cold chain solution to our customers. As far as the infrastructure front is concerned, we are uh, very uh, conscious and active on that front also. This, in this financial year, we will be getting 16 uh, high-speed BLCS new rates. Out of that, in H1, 7 we have received. Nine more we will be receiving in H2, which will take our total uh, count to around 380 rates. So, uh, and we are working on procuring more rigs in future. Apart from that, uh, we are uh, getting more than 500 containers every month for our domestic use, and our domestic fleet of containers is now around 40,000 containers, which is uh, serving us well, and customers are very satisfied with the supply of containers. We are commissioning new terminals also. On that front also, we are very active and uh, we hope that we will be able to commission very critical uh, terminals in this financial year, which will be giving service to our customers. We have given a lot of emphasis on double stacking, which is uh, operational efficiency, and uh, I am happy to announce that uh, there has been 31% growth in H1 
in double stack trains. We, uh, we handled uh, 2,766 double stack trains as compared to 2,100 uh, double stack trains in the corresponding uh, period of last financial year. Just lastly, uh, we have firm indication from the market that uh, domestic uh, demand is going to pick up. As you may be observing, for the last two financial years, we have shown more than 25% growth back to back in domestic. This year again, we hope to maintain very good growth. And uh, as far as Exim is concerned, uh, imports continue to be very strong. They will be continuing same for the uh, remaining uh, five months of this financial year. And exports are weak due to various geopolitical reasons, which all of you are very well aware. So uh, these are my opening remarks. Now we can start question and answer, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use answers while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Amit Dixit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good morning, uh, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers. I have uh, two questions. The first one is essentially if I see the LLF uh, provision for this uh, uh, quarter, that seems to be tad low compared to last quarter. So just wanted to understand whether, I mean, what kind of LLF uh, we should take for the year. Earlier, uh, we thought that it would be around 500 or crores, but from Q2, it looks like it would be lower than that. So just wanted to understand the number and the drivers behind it. Uh, thank you, Amit, uh, uh, for your uh, best wishes. Uh, I will request my director of finance to uh, take this question. Uh, 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 let's have a look on H1. Have you got the figures of H1 also with you? Yes, yes. So H1, uh, what is the figures for last year? 191.49 crores. Yes. And this year the figures are 215.57 crores. Yeah, that's fine, but I was asking both. Yeah, so, so, so we work in a approval system. So first, first quarter, as a good business sense, we made more provisions. And second quarter, we have, uh, we have done the balancing act. And uh, as of now, we are 13% uh, more than what we paid last year. So as you know, the rule says that uh, we have to pay 6% of the uh, total land value, which appreciates at the rate of 7%. So still we have little more provisions. And let's be assured that this will be in the same line only. So at the end of the year, we are somewhere between 460 to 470 at the max. Okay, got it, sir. The second question is essentially on your opening remarks regarding FMCG cargo. So, uh, I mean, quite interesting that you are now focusing quite a bit on domestic market. So, first of all, what could be the domestic market uh, growth, uh, you know, target for us? And FMCG cargo, what kind of margins will it yield? Will it yield lower margin or higher margin compared to what we are getting now from domestic business? Uh, our director domestic, Mr. Azhar Shams, will take this question. Actually, with regard to FMCG cargo, our CMD has just remarked that, uh, you know, that uh, when whatever market is available for FMCG, we are having a very less uh, share with us because most of this cargo is moving via, via road. And the main uh, constraint has been the loadability issue. You know that uh, the loadability of these uh, cargo in normal 20 feet containers has been around 2 to 3 ton, while the rail, as per the railway rating policy, the party had to pay a minimum of 7.5 ton because that is the first lap. So in order to address that, the, that issue and in order to increase the load, loadability and then reduce the part and cost to the customers, we have come up with an, with an innovation of 12 feet high containers. You know that 12 feet high means that every dimension otherwise would be same, this 20 feet uh, length, 8 feet width, but the height will be 12 feet uh, actually, which is normally 8.6. So with that 12 feet, uh, now the loadability is just uh, becoming double. No? We have done trial with Coca-Cola, we have done trial in Goa with the IFB, the loadability is just coming uh, double. 
and the railway has given a rate of one. It means that whatever railway has been charging for a normal 20 feet container, they shall be continue charging for the same amount for these 12 feet high containers. So we find that not only in terms of securing good volume, we are going to get some um, uh, addition in the margin as well. Okay, and what would be the domestic volume growth that you would be targeting for this year and maybe next one? Our CMD has just remarked that the last two years we have been uh, growing at the rate of 25% uh, of the domestic. So we are quite hopeful. Though in, uh, in the H1, the growth has not been to, the, to, to an extent whatever we expected. But in the remaining uh, two quarters, we are quite hopeful that our volume shall be matching the numbers, whatever we gave in the last two years. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's very helpful. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Lavina Quadris from Jefferies. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Congrats on a good set of numbers. I uh, just wanted a sense from you on how Container Corp's market share has uh, done in the last quarter. There's been an issue with, you know, market share being on a downward trend. So how is it done in the last quarter and, you know, what are the steps being taken over the next 12 months and, you know, what are your expectations here on? Thanks. Uh, Lavina, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for your wishes. Uh, the market share of uh, our company has been in the range of 65 to 70 percent. And uh, we basically believe in uh, giving service to our customers. And uh, we don't want to pick up very low margin business. That has been a conscious decision of the company uh, to, uh, to not pick up low margin business, which is uh, anyway, uh, any day we can pick up. But our focus area is basically to give service to our customers with reasonable margin. So uh, that conscious decision stays with the company. This policy is going to continue. So market share will be remaining in the range of 65 to 70% only. Okay. And so lastly, a DFC benefits in this quarter and originating volumes, if you could share. Sorry, uh, you want numbers? Uh, DFC, yeah, yeah, originating volume numbers. And uh, the DFC, has it, that contribution started from this quarter? Yeah, DFC actually uh, started from last quarter only because from the month of May, the uh, DFC was uh, brought up to NCR area, that is Dadri. From then only, uh, we started running uh, freight express trains, which are timetable trains, directly to Mundra port. We, we were able to divert a lot of business from road to rail uh, using that uh, facility. And definitely, it is a very big uh, you know, game changer for us. And we are able to take the cargo in very quickly to the ports. So it has been very, very helpful for us. Okay. And sir, I'm not sure if this was given earlier. Originating volumes, in case I missed it. Yeah. Originating volume for Q2, our uh, exam is uh, 540990. Uh, and for domestic, it is 106998. Total 647988. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mukesh Saraf from Evendis Park. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. <clears throat> My first question is back on the market share. Sorry, uh, Mr. Thanks. Saraf. May we request you to use your handset, please, as the audio is not filled, sir. Thank you. Okay. Is it, is it better now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Okay, thanks. So uh, the question is on market share. Uh, uh, I think last couple of quarters uh, there was some discussion around uh, uh, some loss in market share and, and then you had introduced the one plus one scheme to gain some kind of a share there. So if you could kind of give some update on uh, how the uh, effect of that scheme has been and uh, have we started gaining some of the share that we lost. See, uh, you can al already see the impact of that scheme on the business because uh, you are seeing a growth in uh, exim volumes. Uh, this scheme was basically for exim volumes. And domestic, uh, definitely uh, you would have seen the growth because a lot of good circuits we have picked up. So definitely it uh, results in the growth of the uh, company. But uh, as far as market share is concerned, I already replied in the earlier question that we believe in uh, giving service with sufficient margin. We don't want to pick up low margin business just to increase our market share. That has not been the company's policy, and that will continue to be like that. 
Okay, okay, but uh, okay. So what I was trying to look at, sir, is uh, have, uh, do we have some more distance to cover uh, in terms of our target market share, or, or uh, you know, the scheme has already seen all its benefit. Uh, you know, that's what I was trying to understand. See, already uh, because a lot of development is taking place, we are commissioning new terminals. So definitely, there is a lot of scope to cover the business because uh, business is widespread and uh, there is always a scope to cover the business. But uh, the policy of the company for uh, giving service with sufficient margins will continue. All right, so sure, understood. And second question is on domestic. Uh, while we've seen, started seeing good growth, uh, I do remember that cement was uh, one key uh, segment there which, which had kind of declined for us because of the policy there from the Indian Railways. Uh, any update there? Uh, have we started again uh, uh, moving uh, bulk cement on, on our container, sir? That was actually bulk cement. That uh, policy is under consideration by rail, Railway Board. Railway Ministry is examining it, and uh, very soon we are expecting some result on that. And uh, as soon as it comes, we will uh, circulate it among our customers, and we hope to start the business. So that expected soon, sir? I mean, any sense that you have? I cannot tell you the expected date uh, at present, but we are expected to, expecting it in ah. near future. All right, all right. Great, so thank you. I get back in the queue. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Achal Lohade from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, congratulations for the great set of numbers. Uh, sir, my first question is uh, with respect to the pricing. Uh, is it possible to give us some sense in terms of the pricing? How do you see, um, uh, given the DFC benefits kicking in, uh, especially for Dadri, uh, is there any change in the pricing, what we were charging earlier prior to DFC and now? See, uh, uh, we believe that uh, whenever we save, we, do, we get some savings. We share a part of that with our customers. So believing in this philosophy without sacrificing our margins, of course. So on the working on the same philosophy, if you are uh, aware, uh, as soon as we started double stack trains from Dadri, we passed on the benefit of savings to our customers, and we reduced the tariff by eight to nine percent from Dadri to Mundra and Dadri to Pipawa ports. So that already is there from uh, May onwards, and uh, when Navasheva gets connected on DFC. We will follow the same principle. Understood. Uh, the second uh, question I had was with respect to volumes. Um, now, uh, if you could help us understand on the um, existing locations, what kind of volume growth do we expect in the exim and the domestic uh, segments? Uh, domestic, you've already answered, sir. On the exim part, uh, you know, how do you see the volumes panning out? Uh, and uh, you know, in terms of the imbalance, what is the uh, you know the impact of that in terms of the margins? You know, if you could uh, give us some sense. See, uh, uh, in uh, the exim uh, imports are going to be quite strong in the uh, coming five months of this financial year, and but exports are going to be weak uh, because of the various geopolitical reasons. So, exim growth uh, will be. Uh, more or less uh, similar, what we see saw in Q2, uh, it will maintain that pace, and the guidance of the company will remain uh, same in the range of uh, around 12 to 15 percent. We may slightly uh, beat the uh, guidance, we may exceed that slightly. So that is the our uh, prediction. As far as the empty running is concerned, due to imbalance, that is being uh, countered by more and more double stacking, as I mentioned in my opening remarks. Uh, we uh, we increased double stacking by 31% in H1. So we will continue to use these measures for uh, countering the uh, issue of uh, challenge of uh, empty running and imbalance. Got it. Sir, just a clarification, uh, 12 to 15% volume growth guidance for exam is for uh, current year, FI24? No, 12 to 15% is not for exam, for the company I am telling you. Right. And for, uh, I mean, within that, sir, exam? If you are attentive, you would have seen in the first conference call of this financial year. Uh, but, sir, I mean, uh, I'm just going by w w what has been the growth in the first half. So you can uh, uh, take that it will be 12 to 15% for the overall growth, exam plus domestic. 
Got it. I'll uh, thank you so much, sir. I'll fall back in the queue for further questions. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Abhishek Verma from Fidelity International. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Can you please help with the portwise market share? Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Verma. May I request you to use your handset, sir? Your audio is very low, sir. Hello. Am yes. audible now? Yes. Uh, yes. Now it is better. Yeah. Hello. Thanks for the opportunity. So can you please help with the portwise market share? Portwise, portwise market share is uh, uh, at uh, JNPT. Uh, for the first half, we have 60% market share. And Mundra mm -hmm. port, it is 36%. And Pipawa port, it is 45%. Okay. 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 That's all. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Vikram Suryavanshi from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, congratulations, sir, for uh, good uh, numbers and uh, improvement in the margins. Uh, so two questions. One is on the cold chain business. You talked about uh, uh, restarting that business opportunity. And we earlier had a fresh and healthy and experience of cold chain uh, where we had limited success. So is there any business change in business model to really make a, a cold chain business uh, for us as a, a big uh, contribution? See, uh, uh, in FHEL earlier, what fresh and healthy we were uh, procuring the apples and storing them and selling them. That model we have changed now. We are no longer doing that procurement thing. We are giving our uh, facility for rent to various uh, agencies. Plus, we have developed one agri center also. And uh, the thing that I was talking was the ice battery. This is an innovation uh, by a Japanese firm. Of course, it will take a lot of time if I start explaining everything. So I can only say it's a passive cooling technology. So maybe I can explain you in person separately. It's a passive cooling technology developed by a Japanese entrepreneur. And uh, we have entered into an uh, exclusive agreement with that uh, company for uh, the marketing of this product in India. So only this much only I can tell you, but it's a very nice technology, which is uh, again a green mode of technology, I should say. Got it. And uh, uh, another question about this uh, F uh, FMCG opportunity that we are talking uh, with the 12-foot container. Will uh, last mile be managed by us or it will be through business associates uh, for domestic cargo and how we'll try to capture the value chain for ourselves? Uh, if you can share some views on that. In this 12-foot container, 12-foot uh, high container, uh, as my colleague has already explained to you, this will not be uh, very, very having a comfortable movement on road. So we will do terminal stuffing and terminal de-stuffing. We will not take it on road because it will be dimensions 12 feet high, may not be conducive for road movement. So uh, a customer will have to bring the cargo to originating terminal and at destination it will be taken. So various options are available. We can also provide that service or we can tell our business as well to do that. We are open. Uh, right now we are not very strict on this uh, aspect. Understood. And last, sir, if you can share empty running cost for exam and domestic for this quarter, uh, that would be it. For this quarter you want? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. For this quarter, uh, it is, uh, for exam it is uh, 31.42 crore rupees. Domestic it is 86.70 crore rupees. Total is 118.12 crore. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Atul Tiwari from City. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. sir could, uh, could you share the exam and domestic lead distances? The lead distance for uh, exam uh, for this H1 is uh, uh, 700 kilometers. Domestic, it is uh, 1,400 kilometers. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Nitin, who is an investor. Please go ahead. So your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead with the question. 
the line from Mr. Nitin has dropped. May I request the management? We move to the next question. Okay. Our next question is from the line of Ankita Shah from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you. And uh, congratulations, sir, on a good performance. Uh, sir, my question was on the uh, realization side. Uh, could you throw some light on increase in realization in exam for the quarter by six uh, percent and decline in realization in domestic by nine percent? Uh, so, uh, the reasons for the same. Margins of what? Margins or top line? Reali realization for you. What do you mean by realization? Uh, revenue divided by the total uh, handling volumes. No. For the quarter. No, uh, no, no. Actually, actually, uh, Ankita, you should, uh, you should, uh, you are talking about uh, uh, top line divided by that is per TU you, you are asking. Per TU, yeah, realization per TU. Actually, the proper figure should be originating. You should, you should divide by originating, not by handling. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Have we taken any price hikes for the quarter? Uh, we have not taken any price hikes. Just to share with you, if you look at our fat numbers, uh, for this Q2, uh, our, uh, May I request uh, you to come close? Hello. And, uh, both have been Sorry to interrupt, sir. Hello. So what sir, sorry to interrupt. We have got a fair share of our uh, last month connectivity also. We have the, uh, it's, it's difficult to take an average view of that. Sorry to interrupt. May I request you to come closer to the speaker phone, sir? The audio. Oh, yeah. One minute. So what I'm talking about that if you look at our PAT number, which is coming out of the realization, you can see that uh, the exam as well as in domestic on originating volumes, we have got a better realization this quarter. The numbers that we're talking about is of total throughput, which is got handling as well as the last world connectivity. So that may not be giving you the right picture. Okay, sir. Got it. Um, also, on uh, uh, you know, your, there has been a good improvement in your uh, uh, EBIT uh, margins for the domestic segment. Uh, so, is uh, is there is there scope for improving this further from here on? Yes, actually, there was some movement of uh, because uh, domestic loading is picking up. So, everywhere you cannot expect that you should have both sides loaded movement. So, there have been some stretches where we have to move empty containers. So, but now uh, that uh, circuits are getting built up, so in Q3, uh, uh, I think this uh, issue will be addressed. And we are very hopeful that uh, we will be able to improve the bottom line in domestic to a great extent. Okay. And in this 12 feet uh, containers that we are planning to handle for FMCG, what kind of a tonnage can be handled in this container? That is, uh, that we see, uh, Ankita, tonnage will not be very high. But only thing is the FMCG volume will be very high. So maybe less than 10 tons, I should say. Or 7.5 tons. Yeah, directed domestic will further tell you. Actually, I just, uh, I mean, I mean, when I addressed this issue in the first, in the previous question, I explained you that the FMCG cargo loading like TV, fridges, uh, ACs, and all those, washing machine, etc., in normal 20 feet container has been around 2 to 3 tons. While the party we are paying 7.5 ton of the railway charge, that is the first slab mm -hmm. of the charge which railway I mean, uh, charges from us. And in this, the loading is, uh, whatever experiment we have done, so from 2 to 3 ton, the loading is coming around 10 ton or so. So the per ton loadability and the per ton costing will certainly will be much, much cheaper as compared to whatever road is at, uh, at this point of uh, time is charging. So that is the point, you know, that uh, loadability will increase at least uh, 8 to 10, 10 tons. And the in, uh, I mean, with a reference, that per ton cost will come down as comparison to the road. Got it. Got it. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you and wish you all the very best. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Aditya Mungya from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Um, Hello, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question was on the guidance for FI24. Uh, uh, it seems as if from the 2Q run rate, uh, one has to go 20% higher for the remainder of the year. Uh, 
could you give us a sense of uh, whether there are uh, any large terminals that you are going to add? Because otherwise, given that your market share uh, is flattening out, it's um, uh, difficult to comprehend the growth. Thank you. See, actually, uh, uh, we are commissioning a lot of uh, terminals. Uh, we already, we have commissioned in Q3. One terminal already we have commissioned. See, uh, we should not bother about the uh, market uh, uh, share that I already told you. And in the existing terminals itself, we have a lot of sufficient capacity to handle more volumes. There is no issue on that. And we have a number of uh, rolling stock. We have equipment, that is containers, that I told you in the opening remark. They are already coming. And handling equipments are also there. So existing terminal also have got a lot of capacity to handle more volumes. And as far as demand is concerned, that also I told you in the opening remarks, we are seeing very good demand. So there is no reason why we should not pick up more volume. Um, understood. Uh, and I'm assuming that 2Q numbers uh, did not have any benefit of uh, uh, the impact of shifting our volumes from 1Q because of Cyclone. Am I, am I right in that? These are all... Uh, volumes that were destined to be in the second quarter itself? The, uh, the volumes were not shifted anywhere because of cyclone. They were with us only. Only thing is uh, we were not able to lift those volumes because of disruption in uh, services. So, of course, part of that volume definitely have come to Q2. But Q2 itself has been very robust. And, and this trend is going to continue now. And just uh, one more thing, uh, uh, Dadri, uh, can you give us a sh sense of how big uh, in terms of volumes is Dadri? And because of uh, uh, the linkage to uh, DSC, can that proportion uh, or importance of Dadri go up and by how much? See, Dadri is, is a facility on uh, more than 250 acres. It's a massive facility, a multimodal logistic park, which is having four uh, joint venture CFSs. And at present, it is handling volume uh, to the tune of 400,000 TUs. And uh, we have, uh, we are aiming it to become uh, 1 million TU terminal, first 1 million TU terminal in the country. Understood. Uh, those are my questions. I'll come back and talk to you for more. Thank you for your responses. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kundene from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Sir, my first question is on the employee expenses front. Just wanted to check if there is any one-off in that because it seems to have gone up in the, during the quarter. Uh, yeah. Yes, you're right. Uh, so, uh, as you know, last year uh, the company has done the best ago uh, uh, financial numbers as well as the past so in, in view of that, the board of the company had given one team award of one month of uh, salary to all the employees. So that one time impact of 17 crores is coming in this Q2. So that's the additional. Apart from that, we are growing at 3 to 4 percent uh, uh, normal growth in terms of the staff cost. As so far as number of employees are concerned, it is uh, uh, in fact lesser than what we had last, uh, uh, adding uh, a huge number of em employees in that. So that's one time only, and Q3 you will be having a tapered number. Understood, sir. And sir, uh, my second question is on the market share front. I remember you know, it was about 55% or so about a quarter to back, and now you improved to 65 70%. So just trying to understand what are the ports where you saw this improvement. Also, if you can throw, uh, give us some numbers on the rail coefficient at the ports, please. See, uh, as I uh, told uh, multiple times, not interested to pick up low margin business just for the sake of increasing our market share. We want to give service to our customers with sufficient margins. So uh, consciously, this is a conscious decision of the company. Suppose today I decide to make my market share 80 percent, it will not be very difficult for me. But we don't want to do that. That is not sustainable. Now, uh, as far as rail coefficient is concerned, uh, uh, rail coefficient of containers at if you take the ports. In, in our country is in the range of 18 to 20 percent, which uh, is going to, in next five to six years, when we will have DFC connectivity for Navasheva, as per national rail plan also, it should be touching 40 percent. Got it, sir. Thank you very much, and all the best. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Srinidhi Karlekar from HSBC. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on good set of numbers. So very good growth on uh, Exim front, sir. Would it be possible to throw some light on uh, which commodities, product categories is driving this growth and which are the routes where you are seeing this strong growth? See, in Exim, actually, we are getting good growth in imports, as I mentioned earlier. And the primary drivers are uh, waste paper import that we are getting. Apart from that, we are getting scrap also, uh, HMS heavy melting scrap, which is uh, also a, a big driver for growth. Uh, these two are the main commodities. And uh, exports, of course, are subdued, but whatever we are able to send is reefer and rice, machine parts. These are the main commodities in exports. Yeah. Sorry, sir, I missed the first commodity you spoke about. Scrap, I could understand. What was the first waste. one you said? Waste paper. Waste paper, okay. Solar panels also. Solar panels, waste paper. Right. And sir, recently Railways has put on, put up this 10% uh, busy season surcharge. Has that been passed on to your customers on all the routes? See, uh, that, has, that uh, we have taken a conscious decision that uh, we will uh, see not pass on as it is to our customers. We, we are in talk with our customers and uh, strategically we are passing it on. Some routes we are passing it on as it is. On some routes, we are uh, absorbing a part of that and passing it on. Some routes, we are doing more also. So that's a strategic decision, dynamic decision that we are taking. We are not just uh, mechanically passing it on. But sir, uh, if volume growth continues to be the way it is, which is strong, do you think over a six months, uh, would you be in position generally to pass on this to your customers, on at least on the absolute level of increase? See, actually, uh, we... We, we may take a decision. Uh, uh, I don't think I will use this forum to tell you what we will decide. We'll, we are continuing carrying out analysis, and uh, we may take a decision which will be beneficial for everybody. Yes, sir. Uh, and last one, sir, if I may, would it be possible to share the real freight margin number for this quarter, please? <laughs> real freight margin you want? Yeah. Okay, real freight margin for this uh, quarter is... Uh, 27%. 27. 27%. 27. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir, and all the very best. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Pumika Nair from DM Capital Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Um, yes, sir. So just wanted to understand that, uh, you know, uh, now that the Dadri DFC connectivity has come in and you mentioned that there has been a shift of volumes from road to rail, can you just talk about, um, you know, um, what is the potential kind of volumes or market that we are seeing the shift happening? What are the kind of commodities? What kind of volumes can possibly shift? And, uh, you know, we've also seen a very sharp improvement in the double stack volumes. Um, so how much more scope is there to kind of grow this further? Um, if you can just comment on this, sir. See, uh, uh, as you have seen the growth, it is mainly focused on imports. As I told you, imports are very strong. But still there is a scope for increasing more because uh, the uh, imports, uh, uh, we are not uh, able to capture entire imports which is coming in that area. So efforts are continuing and we, we, uh, we may increase more imports. Now, second thing is the exports. At present, the exports are subdued because of various uh, external factors. So uh, when we get more exports, which are likely, not likely in another four or five months, then we will increase double stacking in exports to a great extent. So that area is still uh, lying, uh, you know, you can say partially tapped. So if we get more exports, we can get more double stacking in exports because right now, because of less exports, we are not able to do that much double stacking. So then uh, I can say that uh, potential of Dadri will be used entirely. To that extent, it is not used. Now, second thing is the connectivity of DFC to Navashiva. DFC is now connected only to Mumbra and Tifawa. Uh, now for Navashiva, they are saying it will be end of 2024. Once Navasheva also comes on DFC, then uh, the potential of double checking will further improve. Will further improve many folds. 
So uh, we, we are keeping our fingers crossed and watching the developments on DFC front. So as as it uh, progresses, our volumes will also grow. Sure. And sir, in terms of, um, you know, Khatwa's terminal, because earlier we were using that as a hubbing point, uh, so now trains are going directly from Dadri to Mundra versus going via Khatwa's, and now only TKD volumes would be flowing through to Khatwa's. That's the way to think about it? The Khatwa's now, actually, uh, Khatwa's is, uh, uh, of course, not as busy as it used to be. You are right. But uh, at Katwas, we are at, having good uh, now originating volumes also we are focusing to develop that. And uh, TKD volumes are going through Katwas and uh, uh, Ludhiana volumes are also going through Katwas. These are the two main ICDs which are, uh, Ludhiana volumes have increased very much. by uh, more than doubled. Uh, Ludhiana volumes are more than doubled also. So we are getting good traction on that front. And Katwas, uh, we are coming up with some schemes which I think I will be able to announce in the next conference call. I don't want to disclose it now. It is premature. So that will further improve the volumes of it was. Got it. So just last bookkeeping question on percentage of our exam volumes from the various ports of uh, JNPT, PIPAO, etc. If I can just have that. Thank you. Okay. It is uh, JNPT is 33%, Mundra 35%. Ipawa 11%, Vizag 7%, Chennai 4%, Valarpadam 3.6%, Tutikoran 2%. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Alok Devra from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, uh, just uh, on the CAPEX number, if you could highlight what the CAPEX we are looking for this year and uh, next year. Any change or what it forecasted before? Okay. Our director projects will uh, reply to this question. Yeah, in the CAPEX, uh, we are having a robust uh, growth. Uh, in the H1, we have already achieved 284 crores. And uh, during the con call after Q1, we had given the guidance that we will achieve capex of 600 crores. And we are confident of surpassing that 600 crores uh, because we are getting a steady supply of containers, new trains, and we are also commissioning new terminals. Sure. And, uh, uh, sir, uh, I, I missed, I think, the first question where you, I think, spoke about LLF. So, LLF now, uh, this year, how much we are uh, penciling in? Because so, during the first quarter, we had mentioned about 500 crore for FI24. And now, till date, we have, uh, I mean, in the first half, we have done around 210 crores or so. So, what is the full year number now for LLF? Sir, it will not be for 500. somewhere around... 450 crores. It will not be 500. So whatever you have H1, we'll have uh, double, maybe a little more than that. Okay, okay. So just if you could uh, highlight as to what changed, I mean, in the first and second quarter, because uh, so 500 crore was also based on the assumption that it was, it would be 7% higher than what it was, you know, last year based on 6% of the land value. We are, we are actually, every time we are reviewing the thing uh, and uh, there were some provisions also uh, earlier, we are adjusting that. And plus we are going to also uh, in, uh, we are planning to surrender in uh, uh, TKD. So, that you know, TKD LLS is the highest. And if we surrender a small part of it, we will have savings in that. Okay. So this is adjusted for that surrender value? Yeah. Again, we have already surrendered one terminal at Baroda. So we are saving something there. So uh, that is why we are, it is a dynamic thing. We are reviewing it quarter to quarter. So we are now anticipating that it will be around 450 to not be 500. And this TKD terminal surrender will happen in uh, second half or how is it? Yeah, it will happen in this quarter, Q3. Okay, okay. And so, uh, so if if we take 450 crore, assuming you surrender it and earlier provisions you had done and you are adjusting for that, then next year it could be this 7% higher of this 450 or? Yeah, like this, this 450 plus 7%. Again, next year also we'll explore the scope where we can further trim our land holding uh, to save on LLS. So we will continue that exercise. Got it, sir. Got it. 
Oh uh, yeah, I think that, uh, that's all from my side, sir. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Alok Deshpande from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, many congratulations on an excellent quarter. So uh, you mentioned about eight to nine percent cost saving coming through uh, because of the DFC volumes uh, starting and uh, which you have passed on. So when more volumes come through over the next eighteen to twenty-four months, uh, what is your sense on you know what can be that overall uh, what cost saving number can we reach or can be achieved uh, which we can pass on more? See, this uh, this is not because of the uh, more and more numbers. This is not working on the economies of scale principle. It is basically the uh, double stacking. In double stacking uh, on the upper deck, the containers that are going, that uh, we have to pay less charges to railways. It's costing on account of that. So that will uh, remain the same, whether we get more volumes, whether we get less volumes. Plus the productivity of rakes will also increase. That will also be in workout. So, so you mean, sir, more double stacking and more rakes is where that uh, further cost saving will come? Yes, because more double stacking will be done by less number of rakes. Because DFC turnaround time is less. But this uh, railway has not reduced this rate. We have, out of our savings, we have passed on to our customers. Understood, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Amit Dinde from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, most of my questions are answered, but can you just uh, help us understand the uh, dispute or uh, the court case that has been mentioned in the notes to the account of 87 uh, crores? So, and any provisioning or any balance sheet impact of that? Our the project will throw some light on this. Yeah, actually, this was a arbitration award on company had moved the NCLT, and NCLT had given. Uh, an order which was adverse to us. We have challenged it in NCLAT and uh, it has been stayed. The NCLT order has been stayed. The status quo continues and uh, the concurrent court case is going on in Delhi High Court. Uh, as for the law of arbitration, we have a right to appeal and uh, we are exercising that right to appeal. So this litigation will continue for some time and there is no need of provision in this. So uh, here, if the litigation comes in your favor, then you will be receiving this amount from the customer? No, no. It, this this amount was awarded to the contractor. It was not a customer. It was a vendor for us. And uh, this amount was awarded in an arbitration dispute to the vendor. And he had claimed that amount from us. And we have taken the legal recourse. And that will continue for some time till the matter is of judice. And uh, once it is settled in the court, then we will... So uh, if it goes against, then there's a cash outflow of this that would come in the near future, if at all? No, no, we don't anticipate that because our case is very strong. And this award, you know, this award had two parts. One was a majority decision and there was also a minority decision. And the difference was huge. So we feel that uh, we have got a bright chance of success. And we have engaged the Solicitor General of India uh, to defend our case because uh, we are a government company and uh, our case is very strong. Right, sure. Sure, got it. That was your question. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Achal Lohade from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thank you for the follow-up opportunity. Uh, sir, my question was, uh, you know, in terms of your uh, business, how much of the exim and how much of the domestic actually sourced by uh, um, other uh, uh, enterprises uh, instead of we are directly sourcing that uh, volume from the direct customers? That uh, so number business actually, partners, we cannot basically. achieve in this conference call. It's not possible. We don't have ready-made numbers. Uh, would that be large or would that be smaller, sir? And will that Depends on terminal to terminal. On a company-wise basis, we don't compile these numbers. Understood, understood. So, sir, uh, another question I had uh, was, uh, you know, with respect to the new initiatives, what you mentioned, um, would this um, uh, would this come through in next uh, or two, three quarters, or is it going to take a couple of years to uh, achieve these, uh, whether it is in terms of the tech solutions and the, um, you know, the first mile, last mile, more aggressive? Um, yeah, if, you are, if you are listening properly, already I have told that, LNG 
drugs are operational. That means already benefits have started coming. So uh, this will not take two, three quarters. Already 50 LNG trucks are under operation. So they are working and 50 more are expected very soon. And uh, seeing the commercial success, we may increase the order. So this initiative is already started uh, working. Well, right, container, right. I told you it is uh, uh, already trials are uh, about to be concluded. Then commercial operations will start for these containers also. Correct. Okay. I, I actually meant for the tech-based logistic solution, app-based FM, LM. Yeah, tech-based logistic solution also. Yeah. I told that for TKD, another 15 days, it is likely to be commissioned. For app-based, it will take one or two months uh, okay. for uh, starting. Understood. And just one uh, question. Uh, in terms of the market sizing, is it possible to get some sense in terms of NCR market, uh, you know, uh, the Northwest market? What would be the market size and how much of that is already, um, you know, uh, moved by uh, rail? I know at port we have talked about r rail coefficient, but I was just curious because some of this cargo will remain on road even if uh, uh, opposed EFC, right? I mean, for the shorter distance so i i think you are giving your insights not asking any questions so you are already answered your question <laughs> no no sir I, I what i wanted to know is the uh, you know the market size in particular like is it four five six million to use uh, numbers like that for say dadri market like you mentioned one million we, uh, we we keep that intelligence with us we don't share it in conference call please all right sir thank you so much wish you all the best thank you our next question is from the line of Aditya Mungia from Vortex Securities. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, the first question that I had was uh, the impact on volumes uh, uh, as we surrender the railway land in Tumlakabad. Um, would it be a small or a significant impact? See, uh, I just wanted to uh, clarify very clear, very emphatically that wherever we are surrendering, surrendering the land, we are not losing any volume. It's a very, very, it's a decision which is taken after a lot of deliberations. Like 16 terminals we have surrendered, we have not lost any volume. The volume is still with us in the uh, neighboring terminals or some facility of our own we have developed. Like for example at Baroda, we are surrendering the Baroda land, already surrendered, and we have come up with a very big logistic park at a place called Varnama, which is 15 kilometers from Baroda. So that volume has come to our facility, we are getting more volumes because I am able to give more services to customers. So at TKD, Tublakabad, if we surrender the land, it is not that we will lose the volumes. Volume will remain with us only. Understood. Uh, that clarifies. Um, the second question that I had was a more broad question on pricing as such. Uh, and I'm assuming that uh, rail, uh, uh, rail freight margins uh, are comparable over the years. Uh, this number of rail freight went from 26% to 30% and is now at about 27 uh, wanted to get a sense that given the change in cost dynamics, uh, would you be thinking through lower numbers of rail freight margins um, uh, incrementally where things stabilize? And I'm taking a cue from uh, you not passing on the cost increase uh, from haulage uh, to customers at large. Just trying to get a sense of whether there should be, whether the sustainable rail freight margins for you uh, should be lower than 27. See, uh, rail freight margins actually, uh, there is a slight drop. That reason is the running of empty, not because of uh, not passing the uh, increase to customers. Because if you are aware, we are having a lot of schemes like uh, one plus one scheme and movement of empty containers. But we have taken care of. Uh, these, uh, you know, uh, schemes in our uh, other charge, in the form of other charges. That is why if you see our operating margin, our operating margin is intact. In fact, for uh, uh, this quarter, we have uh, shown an operating margin of 32.7%, whereas for uh, same period of last year, it was 32.5%. So it is slightly increased only. Uh, operating margin is a better way to look at these things in totality because rail freight is we are uh, uh, passing on some incentive to our customers but compensating in other forms. So operating margin covers everything. So that is the reason of rail freight margin and second is the imbalance of imports exports. That Because of that also uh, it slightly hits the rail margin. 
but we are able to compensate it by doing more double stacking. So these are the reasons for drop in real margin. Better indices will be to look at operating margin. Understood. But questions would still remain. Do you believe that uh, Concord is at the right pricing levels from a competitive perspective? Or uh, does it require some further uh, tinkering at an overall level from here on um, to, to hit the right spots from a volumes perspective? Uh, see, actually, in logistics, uh, you may be tracking other companies also. We are having a EBITDA margin of 26-27%, which is very, very high. Logistics normally company operate at a single digit margin. So we are operating at a very high EBITDA margin. Over the years, we have been maintaining more than 25% or around 25%. So more than that is not sustainable. So I think 24%, uh, 25%, 26% is a reasonably good EBITDA margin in logistics business. So it will continue to be this in the coming years also. Sure. Just a last clarification, sir. The other income uh, has increased quite meaningfully on the P&L and also as a cash item uh, on one ish to one ish last year. Uh, could you give us some more clarity because we couldn't see uh, uh, the underlying asset base, uh, which is cash and bank balances, going up by a meaningful amount. Um, so just trying to get a sense whether two H can be as good as one H. Uh, I hope you only uh, tracking the FD rates also. FD interest rates. FD interest has gone quite high. Number one. Mm. Number two, the dividends that we are getting from our uh, joint ventures are also quite uh, substantial this year. So last year everybody has done well. So, you know, we have got around 12 uh, joint ventures working with uh, various uh, partners, CFS and all. So, from there, our dividend uh, collection is very robust, as well as uh, uh, the interest rate of FD has gone by nearly 150 basis points to 200 basis points. So, it's out of that. Understood. Um, those are my questions. Thanks a lot for your response. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Priya Karvesas. From BNP Paribas, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, I just have some two quick questions. So one is uh, usually in the third or fourth quarters, uh, we do provide some employee provisionings on post-retirement medical benefits and others. So typically either it's in the third quarter or the fourth quarter. So in that sense, in this year, can you give us some uh, highlight, uh, like whichever quarter it happens, so how much uh, how much it can go up by from the normal quarterly run rate? No, I think you have got some wrong uh, notion on that. Uh, you know, uh, in our accrual system of accounting under India's rules, every mm -hmm. quarter you have to the, do the, the provisioning. In fact, you see my staff cost in Q2, it is higher, and one question was answered that it was a little more higher for the fact that uh, we take one of uh, uh, payments of uh, uh, awards in this uh, uh, particular quarter. Otherwise, on a tutorial basis, including gratuity, leave encashment, PRP, whatever we are supposed to pay, it has to be equally taken into every quarter. The rest of that, no auditor will sign my balance sheet. So it's nothing that uh, in Q3 and Q4 we will load more and we will not load in Q1, Q2. This is not the practice in in the uh, account system. I hope I have clarified. Uh, okay. And sir, uh, this time the domestic margins have been quite high at around 10%. So do you expect that to sustain? Uh, and if so, what are the drivers, uh, what are the factors that is uh, leading to this high margin this time? Uh, on domestic, domestic, domestic uh, uh, business has shown very encouraging results and uh, we have been able to develop good in which uh, empty movement has come down. So that has improved our bottom line in domestic market. It will continue to be like this. We are developing more uh, such streams where we have uh, more and more loaded movement. Empty movement is uh, we are, our effort is to bring it down because that is infructuous kind of thing. But infructuous but very essential. But uh, we, so that is the reason of improving in bottom line in domestic. Uh, so should we take this 9-10% margin as a sustainable level broadly, like let's say on yes. an annual basis? Yes, yes, we should. Okay. As a just squeezing, just one last thing, uh, of your, all the terminals that you have, uh, how many of them would be connected uh, via first mile, last mile services? Uh, end -to -end it is actually uh, difficult to answer this question right now because I don't have the numbers. All I can say is uh, we are able to uh, uh, give this service to 30% of our volumes on a pan-India level. 
but uh, terminal wise i think it will be very difficult for me to answer now i have don't have the numbers with me okay so 30% of the overall volumes are are end to end covered so like that that should be the interpretation yes and Thank this is this is growing okay this is growing uh, so like previous years it would be much lower than it is because uh, it is started from zero very less now it uh, previous year it was of 22 to 25% in fact it is not only growing it is giving us a good margin also every year So as our CMT mentioned that you should look at the operating margin. So whatever stress we are having on our rail freight margin, that is mm -hmm. actually being compensated with this kind of uh, growing margin where we are getting a lot more connectivity business. So sir, if we compare, let's say like two years back, so would it be right to say that your first mile, last mile would be very low, like single digits or something like that? And yes, pro probably as you go higher than 30 percent, maybe let's say in another two three years, let's say 50 percent, so your margin should improve even more. So yes, is yes. this the thought process? Of course. Okay, sir. Very clear, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rohit Ori from Pramod. One hour is, I think, uh, completed. We can take this last question, I think. Okay, sir. Our next question is from the line of Rohit Ori from Progressive Shares. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Two questions, uh, which are from the uh, chairman speech uh, of the EGM. Uh, so, if you'd like to take us uh, to the developments of the two subsidiaries, Sitkal Concor and uh, Punjab Logistics. Both are doing extremely well, and this uh, Sitkal uh, Logistics is uh, posted very good results this time. I don't have it in front of me. But mm -hmm. all I can say is uh, we are hopeful from next financial year they will start paying dividend also. Both. Okay. Even Punjab Logistics is also growing very uh, robustly. We they will also pay the dividend from next financial year. Okay. And they have also come in positive. They have shown profit. Sitful is also profitable. And so these are sustainable over uh, the next two three years or so. Sorry. Uh, you feel that these are sustainable over the next two, three years. Sustainable for uh, uh, forever. Okay. And for next okay. financial year, they will start paying dividend. That is what I told you. Yeah. They are very much sustainable. Okay. So my second question is related to the uh, opportunities that we see uh, for the entire sector as a whole. Uh, may it be uh, food supply chain uh, management or coastal shipping or uh, distribution logistics. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, opportunity in terms of the uh, diversification so uh, do you think that uh, concord would be interested in any of these uh, diversifications or soft diversifications if any yes concord is very conscious about these developments and uh, we are of course working on it we don't tell, tell everything in the investor conference mm -hmm. so we are working on coastal shipping also we stopped it due to covid and distribution logistics as far as distribution logistics is concerned we are working on that front also we are working on all the areas where we can diversify okay so thank you thanks a lot thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question of our question and answer session i would now like to hand the conference over to ms bhumika nayar from dm capital advisors limited for closing comments Yes, um, I would like to thank the management for answering all the questions and uh, giving us an opportunity to host the call, as also all the participants for uh, the active participation. Thank you very much, sir, and wish you all the very best. Thank you, Bhumika. Thank you, and a happy Diwali to all of you. Thank you. On BA, behalf of DM Capital Advisors Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.